About a month ago or so, we made a video over the top 10 tournament arcs in JRPGs. In the intro of that video, I mentioned how JRPGs tend to borrow a lot of tropes and elements from anime. Now obviously, in that particular video, I was referring to tournament arcs, but that's not to say they're the only setting that JRPGs draw inspiration from. One of the most popular subgenres of anime back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s was the mech or super robot setting popularized by series such as Mobile Suit Gundam, Voltron, Mazinger Z, Macross, and I could keep going. In fact, it was so prominent in anime that it almost became synonymous with the uh, medium itself. I remember browsing various gaming and anime forums as a young tyke, and often seeing the descriptions of the anime boards include something about giant fighting robots. I mean, it sounds cool as shit. Who doesn't love oversized mechs fighting each other with all types of guns and missiles? Well, apparently a lot of people, I guess, considering the subgenre peaked in Western popularity in the 90s with series such as Gundam Wing and Neon Genesis Evangelion, and has slowly been dying ever since. Before the interest started wearing off though, while we didn't necessarily get a ton of JRPGs with mech influence, we did get a pretty decent handful. Hell, some of them are still going on to this day, more popular than ever. In this video, we wanted to highlight some of these JRPGs that have a fairly heavy mech inspiration. Some heavier than others though, obviously. So, without further ado, here's a list of 8 great mecha JRPGs that you need to play. The first game we have on our list, or games I should say, is the Front Mission series. Front Mission is a long-running strategy RPG series developed by Square that features mechs and got its start on the Super Famicom back in 1995. Of course, we in the West never got that version, so the series wouldn't make it stateside until the third entry in the series with Front Mission 3 for the PlayStation. I should note though, while we never got the first Front Mission back when it was initially released, we did get a port with added content to the Nintendo DS many years later. This and the third one both have a lot of gameplay similarities with one another, so if you like one of them, you'll probably like the other. It's a grid-based strategy RPG that plays out pretty similarly to other games in the genre, such as Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy Tactics, just with a mech setting, obviously. The plots in both games are very mature and politically driven, and combined with a cool cutscene direction and character art, makes them pretty engaging playthroughs. After Front Mission 3, we wouldn't see another game in the series until 7 years later when Front Mission 4 came out for the PS2. Compared to its predecessors, this one featured a bit more complex mechanics, for better or for worse. Unfortunately, I do think it was for the worse though, as sales couldn't have been too good considering it's the last game in the series we've ever gotten in the West. The series is technically still going on in Japan to this day, but it seems to have shied away from its tactical RPG beginnings. If you're new to the series, I would probably either recommend starting with the first or the third entry, and then moving on to the more convoluted fourth one if you enjoy them. If you like the style of Front Mission, but aren't really a fan of the slow-burning strategy RPG gameplay though, then there might be an entry that's more your speed. Front Mission Gun Hazard was never officially released in the West, but there does exist a really awesome fan translation online making the game fully playable in English. This one opts for a more side-scrolling action RPG gameplay. You can level up, equip various weapons, and even change character jobs. Also, in an epic combination, the music just so happens to be composed by both Nobuo Oimatsu and Yasunori Mitsuda. Yes, the same ones from the Final Fantasy series and the Chrono and Xeno series. I know people like to throw the term hidden gem around a lot, but Gun Hazard really is one in every sense of the word. Whatever your gameplay preference, the Front Mission series definitely has some entries that are worth going back to these days. The next game we have up is Ring of Red. Ring of Red is a tactical RPG that was developed by Konami and was released back in 2001 for the PS2. It takes place in a really interesting alternate history version of post-World War II events where Japan was taken over by both the US and Soviet Union, splitting the nation up in two. The game has a really distinct visual style from the character art to the menu UI and the old school war footage edited in with mechs from the game. It's a cool aesthetic, I think. The gameplay plays out like a turn-based strategy RPG where the combat then shifts to a sort of real-time mode when you engage with other units. Honestly, it's a lot to explain in just this short segment, but just know it's a pretty complex system featuring stuff like a day and night cycle, 
range mechanics, terrain advantages and disadvantages, and a lot more. Once you get the hang of it though, it's a lot of fun. However, it is one of those games where the battles can get really long and the game in general is also quite lengthy. It may not be for everyone with that in mind. Most strategy RPGs can be like that, but considering this one really doesn't have much else besides the story and combat, it requires a bit higher tolerance than most, I think. The game may not appeal to everyone due to some of these reasons, but for the ones it does appeal to, they'll probably find a lot of enjoyment in it. And to those people, this is definitely a game I would recommend checking out. Next on our list, we have the Super Robot Wars series. Oh man, where to begin here? Super Robot Wars is an incredibly big series spanning over 50 games so far. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them haven't been released in the West or translated in English, but some of them have. The first games we got in America were Super Robot Tizen Original Generation 1 and 2 for the Game Boy Advance. These are pretty standard strategy RPGs and are fun enough in their own right. The next game we would get would be a spin-off for the Nintendo DS called Super Robot Tizen OG Saga Endless Frontier. This one played out more like a traditional turn-based RPG rather than the tactical-based gameplay the series was previously known for. These games are great and all, especially in this frontier, what is this, Reggie? despite its outrageous price tag. However, I really wanted to mention this series more for the later games. While the last few games haven't gotten English physical releases, there are English translations on the Asian copies, and if you know what you're doing, they're not that hard to get a hold of and play. Super Robot Wars V, Super Robot Wars X and Super Robot Wars T are all officially English translated and well worth playing. They are incredibly flashy, stylistic games that almost make you feel like you're playing an interactive anime. While you always play as an original character in the universe, the stories are often intertwined with actual licensed anime and it's probably why they don't get physical releases in the West. I mean, some of the latest entries have characters from Cowboy Bebop and Gurren Lagann, just to give some examples. If there's any mech anime you can think of, it's probably been featured in Super Robot Wars at some point. The games play out like strategy RPGs, but honestly, they're pretty simple overall and not as complex as they might look. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the appeal these games have come from the amazing style in their gameplay and cutscenes. Even when simply attacking an enemy, instead of just doing a basic ass attack animation, you're treated to a really engaging animation that plays out pretty much like an anime would and does a great job at hyping you up. The visual flair, aesthetics, and just dopamine hits you get from these games are unlike none other. A lot of people in the West still don't know about this series yet, for understandable reasons obviously, but that just makes them that much more enticing to check out as they're pretty much an undiscovered realm of mecha anime tactical RPG excellence. You really can't go wrong with any of the latest entries. The next game we have on our list is Vanguard Bandits. Vanguard Bandits was developed by Human Entertainment and was released for the original PlayStation back in 2000. The game takes place in a medieval fantasy setting of sorts with giant mechs that you control in combat, the combat of which plays out like a strategy RPG. Big surprise, right? As I'm sure many of you have noticed, there seems to be a huge trend with mecha RPGs always seeming to be strategy tactical based in nature. Yeah, what is that? Vanguard Bandits is no exception. It does have some different gameplay mechanics though, such as branching storyline paths and the ability to choose stats when leveling up. The story is a pretty interesting, politically driven plot, which is also pretty standard with the genre. Overall, I wouldn't say Vanguard Bandits is an absolutely amazing game or anything, but it is a fun enough experience with a lot of charm and replayability. We did feature this game in our video about 8 great JRPGs you can beat in under 20 hours, so if you want to hear some more of my thoughts about it, then be sure to check out that one. Next up, we have Zone of the Enders Fist of Mars. Fist of Mars is the third entry in the Zone of Enders series and was released back in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance. Despite being part of the same series, this one plays out much differently than the first two Zone of the Enders games as those ones were more third person hack and slash, whereas Fist of Mars instead plays out like a turn based tactical RPG. It's also the only entry in the series not to feature involvement from Hideo Kojima of Metal Gear Solid fame. You wouldn't really know that by playing the game though, as it's very dialogue and cutscene heavy. Make no mistake, this is a game where you'll be spending a lot of time reading text. Some people love that, other people don't. It is what it is, but just keep it in mind. 
In between the bouts of dialogue, though, comes turn-based tactical battles that don't really deviate a lot from others in the genre. The one major thing that sets it apart from other games like this is that when you attack or defend against an enemy, you enter into a first-person mode where you then have to line up your target against the enemy mecha or avoid the target of the enemy mecha in order to successfully perform criticals or dodge enemy attacks. It's an interesting and fun mechanic for sure, but it does make the game a little too easy once you get the hang of it, I think. Fortunately, there is the option to turn it off if you wish. All in all, similar to Vanguard Bandits, I wouldn't say Fist of Mars is an absolute pillar of the genre that's gonna blow you away, but if you're a fan of the setting and know what you're getting into, then it can be a pretty fun game and worth checking out. The next game we have on our list is Steambot Chronicles. Steambot Chronicles was developed by Irem, published by Atlas, and was released back in 2006 for the PS2. It's a super unique game, combining elements of action RPGs, utilizing mech-based combat, or trotmobiles in this particular game's case, and musical rhythm. Yeah, musical rhythm. Definitely not something you usually see in games like this, but it does tie into the plot. You end up joining a band called the Garland Globetrotters. I'm not kidding about that either, by the way where you'll learn to play various instruments and earn money and stuff like that. The action RPG gameplay has you fighting in trotmobiles against other trotmobiles where you'll do all types of stuff from melee attacks to ranged and so on and so forth. In between the musical rhythm sections and the combat is a more sandbox style free roaming experience where you can walk around at your own leisure doing all types of things from side quests to performing music to trading stocks, to dating various girls, and I could keep going. It really is packed full of content. The game certainly gives you tons of freedom from everything I've mentioned to even the simple dialogue choices. You can basically choose how you want to react to any event, making the character's personality whatever you want it to be, really. Now, none of this really has any bearing on the actual story, but it's still pretty cool to see. There even comes a point later in the game where you get to decide your own character's backstory and some of these later choices do indeed affect the ending. When it comes down to it, Steambot Chronicles is a very ambitious game with a lot of really interesting ideas. It may not necessarily execute all of them perfectly, but I have to give it props for everything that it does do, as it's a really unique, laid-back experience that I can't get anywhere else. If this steampunk, mecha, action RPG looks appealing to you, then check it out. The next game we have up is Sakura Wars. Sakura Wars is actually a long-running series that first began in the 90s, but I'm only going to focus on the most recent entry for this video. Most of the other titles haven't been localized in English, and the only other one that has been comes with a pretty hefty price tag these days. The latest installment is definitely the most accessible overall, and it's pretty much a soft reboot of the series anyway, making it a good starting point. It's almost hard to call the game a true RPG as it's essentially equal part dating sim, visual novel, and action RPG. A lot of this game is just dialogue and interacting with characters. If stuff like that doesn't sound appealing to you, then this one may not be your speed. There's certainly a sizable fan base that does appreciate stuff like this though, so for those people, this one should be right up your alley. The combat in this game has you piloting mechs and plays out like a pretty standard third person action RPG. It's quite basic overall and doesn't really reinvent the wheel or anything, but it's still pretty fun. The bigger appeal from this game probably comes from the visual novel dating sim aspects of it, where it plays out pretty much like an interactive harem anime. Of course you can expect most of the classic anime tropes the genre is known for, but the charming characters along with the vibrant world creates a really relaxing atmosphere the fans of this style are sure to enjoy. We did include this game in our best JRPGs of 2020 video, so I do think it is a quality experience through and through. If it looks interesting to you, check it out. Alright, to finish off this list, we have the ever-famous Xeno series. The Xeno series is a long-running franchise that first got its start on the original PlayStation with Xeno Gears. The series has a pretty interesting history throughout its lifespan as it's seen various development teams in Squaresoft and Monolith Soft and radically different gameplay design between most of the titles. You could break down the Xeno series into three different sub-series. Xeno Gears, which was a standalone game, Xeno Saga 1, 2, and 3, and Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, along with Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is almost like a spin-off of that subseries. Yeah, I did say it was pretty interesting. 
With that said, not all of the titles have a big mecha influence though, so I'm only going to focus on the ones that do. Let's start with the first one, Xenogears. Now, I'm probably the worst person to ask for an unbiased opinion on this game, as Xenogears is one of my favorite RPGs ever. It even topped our top 10 PlayStation RPGs that aren't Final Fantasy list. If you want to know in more detail why that game resonates with me so much, then be sure to check out that video. Otherwise, I'll keep it pretty brief here. The game is just flat out epic in every aspect of the word. It has the most complex story I've ever seen in an RPG. The music is incredible. The characters and especially the villains are all super memorable. The themes it covers are so deep and mature. And I could keep going for like an hour. Okay, maybe more like a few minutes or so as you can only say so much short positive statements about a game. But still, it's fucking amazing. The biggest mecha influence in the series, however, in my opinion, comes from Xenoblade Chronicles X. The game is a really interesting blend of both JRPG and WRPG game design. You create your own character at the start, and eventually, near the halfway point, you gain access to what the game calls skells, which are basically just giant mecha robots that you can fly around in and do all types of cool shit with. The grand sense of scale and freedom when you finally unlock these, getting to fly around maps you were previously walking around in feeling like a little ant, is just epic, for lack of better words. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just a really cool feeling. Now unfortunately, the game's story and characters kind of falls flat on its ass in my opinion, but if you want some really engaging exploration and giant mechs traversing through bright and vibrant fantasy worlds, then Xenoblade Chronicles X is definitely a game that you should look into. Xenosaga also has a fairly heavy mech setting as well, but this segment's already getting long enough so I'm gonna end it there. Minus the second one, they are a good set of games though. However, also not the first in the series that I would want to go back and revisit these days. Just being honest. And with that said, that about wraps up this video. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed it. There were some other games I thought about including here, like Trails of Cold Steel for example, but the mech setting really doesn't become prevalent until the second game, and you do have to play the first game in order to get there, so yeah, I decided to skip it. What are some of your favorite mecha games though? And are you a fan of the genre in general? Let us know with a comment below. Me personally, I did like it, but I also wasn't necessarily a diehard fan either. I always thought stuff like Gundam Wing looked really cool in passing, but when it came to me actually watching shows, I usually opted for more stuff like Yu Yu Hakusho, Roroni Kenshin, Outlaw Star, Trigun, and stuff like that. In terms of Toonami shows and whatnot at least. But with that said, Gurren Lagann also happens to be one of my favorite animes ever, so go figure. Alright, I'm just rambling now, so let's end it there. Hope you have an awesome day everyone, this is Gaming Reductions, until next time.